There we go. Okay, in this video we're going to look at the power of a power property of exponents. So here's page one, and here is page two, these examples, and that's all. So starting with page one, if we have a look at five squared, that is then put to the power of three, okay, if you follow, you know, the order of operations, PEMDAS, you would square the five and get 25, and then you would cube 25 and get the answer, right? Or, you know, we could just work on, if I, if I, I could write it differently, I could write the 5 squared as 5 times 5, and now that is, all of this is cubed. All of this is cubed, okay? If you cube something in the parentheses, it becomes this, parentheses, times parentheses, times parentheses, three times, right? So it becomes 5 times 5, times 5 times 5, times 5 times 5, doesn't it? So it's 5 squared all cubed. Now, look at that and see, does that make sense that that's what this is? It's 5 squared, see, 5 times 5, times itself 3 times cubed, okay? Now, my question to you is, how many 5s are being multiplied there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so that can be written as 5 to the power of... Six fives been multiplied, that means it's five to the power of six. Yep. And now answer me this. What's three multiplied by two? Oh, that's six, isn't it? Right. So instead of expanding this out, we have a nice uh rule where we can simply write that as five to the power of two multiplied by three. Which of course is five to the power of six. So this is the power of a power rule. It's power of three on a power of two, basically. So it's the power of a power property, right? So if I had x to the power of four all squared, just to make us, help us understand this rule, that of course is, you know, and I can even do it this way. Look, the, if the squared is on the parentheses, so that's parentheses times parentheses. That's x to the power of four times x to the power of four. I can write it that way if I like, okay? Now that becomes, x to the power of four, of course, is, x times x times x times x four times and then this other one is the same thing it's x times x times x times x four times again so I've got four x's times four x's so my question is how many x's are being multiplied by each other well we've got one two three four five six seven eight so that would can also be written as x to the power of Eight, isn't it? Now, what's two multiplied by four? That's also eight, okay? So we see this nice rule means that we can simply write this as x to the power of four multiplied by two, or in other words, x to the power of eight. Does that make sense? And that's handy because if I had something like two to the power of a hundred, all to the power of, um, you know, four, I don't have to write out 100 twos multiplied for and then to the power of 4. I just go, well, that's 2 to the power of 100 multiplied by 4 to the power of 400, and I'm done. That's it. Okay? So, a to the power of m, and by the way, 2 to the power of 100 is 400 is 2 times itself 400 times. Okay? So, you can see the reason we use exponents in math is to represent huge numbers with little ink. Okay? This number, I don't even think your calculator can store that. It's so big. Okay? So but but there are big numbers in the world. And um and so in other words, uh, and I guess just on that note, if if you might know this, but um ten to the power of a hundred, that is is called uh Google. So that's where the Google word comes from because I mean the Google search engine on your computer uh, on the internet obviously has to search through many many words uh, to find what you're looking for and uh, so Google uh, software uses you know big big uh, numbers and stuff and so 
so that's where the the Google company came up with the um, their name because ten to the power of a hundred is actually called a Google. So you know it, we know we've heard of a billion and a million and stuff, but there are huge numbers in the world, and that's why we use exponents. I mean, I'm not going to write ten to the power of a hundred as one and then a hundred zeros. I mean, that's ridiculous, isn't it? You wouldn't have enough paper. Okay. So anyway, that's the point of exponents. Okay. So our point with this is the power of a power property is a to the power of m all to the power of n becomes a to the power of can you guess it 5 squared to the power of 3 was 5 to the power of 2 times 3 x to the power of 4 all squares is x to the power of 4 times 2 and this became 2 to the power of 100 times 4 so it's a to the power of m multiplied by n times n right and that's great because it really helps us work out with work with negative numbers 2 to the negative 3 all to the power of 5 is 2 to the power of negative 3 times 5 where did that times come from came from the rule when you take a power of a power you're allowed to simply write that with the same base and multiply the exponents and we all know that negative 3 times 5 is negative 15 and that's the answer Similarly, 7 to the power of negative 4, all to the power of negative 1 is simply 7 to the power of negative 4 times multiplied by uh, negative 1. And you know you can put that in parentheses if you like. So it's you know, negative 4 times negative 1, which of course is negative times negative gives positive. So 7 to the power of positive 4. And that's the answer. And you don't have to, you know, calculate these. Just just leave them like that. That's fine. 10 to the power of negative 1 to the power of negative 3 is simply 10 to the power of negative 1 times negative 3. And negative times negative is positive. 1 times 3 is 3. So this is simply 10 to the power of 3, right? And b to the power of 5, all to the power of negative 2 is simply b to the power of 5. Can you get this one? Times the negative 2. And that gives us b to the power of negative 10, right? So on to page two now, and I'm going to suggest you do problems of this form in this way so that we don't confuse confuse ourselves, and I'll, I'll try and explain that by the end. So if I have a times b all cubed, okay, let's we're just going to practice it this way. If the cube if the cube is on the parenthesis, that's simply parenthesis times itself three times, okay? So that's a times b times a times b times a times b, and of course I have, you know. A times B, this thing can be written 3A's multiplied, then 3B's multiplied. And letters written beside each other implies multiplication. You don't have to put the multiplication dots in there. You can just, you know, leave the letters by each other. And of course, this is now A times A times A, of course, is A cubed. And B times B times B is B cubed. So it's the answer is A cubed times B cubed. Okay? Um, Similarly, if we had this situation, I advise you to do it simply this way. Put, you know, this squared is on this parenthesis. Okay, so that means it's parenthesis times itself. Twice, right? It's squared. So we simply have a cubed b squared times a cubed times b squared. Okay. And you can write the next line, if you like, as a cubed times a cubed and then b squared times b squared. Now, remember, we have two bases. Bases, they're the same. They're being multiplied by each other. So what can we do with the exponents? If you multiply by the same base, what do you do with the exponents? Add, subtract, or multiply? Add them, right? So a to the power of 3 plus 3, which, of course, is a to the power of 6, right? So you add them. And here, this is a to the power of 6. And then, of course, this one, once again, we have the same base, b. And they're being multiplied, multiplying by the same base. Again, we can add the exponents, b to the power of 2 plus 2. So that's a to the power of 6 times b to the power of 4, and you're done, right? Now, the problem with these um, guys is 
sometimes we see the trick. The trick is 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6. Okay? The reason I am not going to uh, show, I mean, so basically my point is there's also a rule where you simply take the square root and you put it in here and here and you simply get a to the power of 6, b to the power of 4. The reason I don't encourage using that rule is because you might get confused with if you with having say a plus b all squared. If you have this situation, people like to take the squared and stick it in here and here and simply write that as a or as, um sorry <coughs> a squared plus b squared. This is completely wrong. Okay, this is just not right at all. And it's only when you have multiplication that you can use this rule by putting the squared inside. When you have addition or subtraction, you cannot use this rule. Okay, and just to remind you, I mean, if I had, for example, the number, uh, if I had, say, 3 plus um, 4 all squared, okay, this is definitely 7 squared, which, of course, is 49. We know that, 49, right? So the answer is definitely 49. Now, is that equal to, uh, if I put the squared in on the 3 and the 4, does that work, or is that nonsense? Is that the same thing as 3 squared plus 4 squared? Because 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 4 times 4, 16, 9 and 16 is 25, okay? So 3 plus 4 all squared is not equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared, okay? Similarly, a plus b all squared is not the same thing as a squared plus b squared, okay? In fact, if you recall, a plus b all squared should be written parenthesis times parenthesis, a plus b times a plus b, and if you multiply that out, that's a squared plus a b, and then b times a is another a b, and then b times b is b squared, and it all adds up to a squared plus 2 a b plus b squared, not just a squared plus b squared, but a squared plus 2 a b plus b squared. Okay, so what always works for us is whenever we see an exponent on a parenthesis, we write that as the parenthesis times the parenthesis, and then we do the correct multiplications, and then we always get the right answer. So that's why I'm encouraging you on these questions, if you see a squared on a parenthesis, write that parenthesis times parenthesis, or, or similarly with the cube, it's parenthesis times itself three times, okay? So in these type of problems, I'm encouraging you to do that and not to use the trick. So if I have a cubed times b to the power of 5 all squared, this squared is, is on the parenthesis, so that's parenthesis times parenthesis, and I have a cubed times b to the power of 5 here and here. And, of course, I can just multiply the a's. a cubed times a cubed is a to the power of 3 plus 3. b to the power of 5 times b to the power of 5 is simply b to the power of 5 plus 5. So this is simply a to the power of 6, b to the power of 10. So press pause and try this example. x to the power of 4 times y, all squared. Okay, now I'll do it. I'm simply going to... Expand this out. If that squared is on the parenthesis, that's parenthesis times parenthesis, which gives me x to the power of 4 times y here and here. Okay. Now, x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 4 is simply x to the power of 4 plus 4, which, of course, is x to the power of 8. And the y times the y is y squared. Or you could say, well, that's y to the power of 1 times y to the power of 1, which is y to the power of 1 plus 1. Or, you know, it's just y squared. And we all know y times y is y squared. So that's the answer, right?